Hello there. My name is Alicia, aka Edmiston Creations, and I am a wife, mom, social worker, and athlete living in the mountains of South Central New Mexico. And this is a space where I like to share about the things that I've been making. Um, mostly that includes knitting and sewing, but I do crochet some, and I also like to share about maybe whatever else I've been up to, whether that be working out or doing things outside, doing things with my family or some social work things. Um, I really enjoy my profession and sharing some general mental health and wellness tips with you that you could try out on your own um, if you would like. So if any of that sounds like something interesting to you, then you are welcome here and I hope you enjoy the content that I share. Um, today, I finally have had time to get on and record another podcast. Um, life has just been lifing, I, I, for lack of a better word, the last couple of weeks and uh, I have been just in it and enjoying work and being with the kids and getting out and about in town and doing things outside. So here I am again, finally with a promised podcast topic, patterns and knitwear that are really great to use for uh, active wear or whether you work out or whether you just like to spend time outdoors, going outside, hiking, um, walking around your neighborhood. These are all items that are go-to grabs for me. So I'm gonna share those things. And then I do have a bit of show and tell for you, a test knit, a finished object, and some kind of future plans. And so we'll just see what we get through because I don't want to, I don't want this to go too long. So without further ado, let's dive in. Um, I actually just finished working out this morning. So I am in workout gear and I thought that that would be good, um, you know, just kind of a good place to jump off of. Um, I, I, I have posted videos on Instagram and pictures of working out in my hand knit sweaters. And I, I do work out in my hand knit sweaters um, pretty consistently throughout the winter. Um, I will say whenever I work out in my hand, <clears throat> excuse me, in my hand knit sweaters, I typically am doing a power lift session where um, it it's straight lifting or like the Olympic lifts, um, you know, so I'm going for strength. I, I'm not necessarily, I've never worn a hand knit sweater for a Metcon, mainly because I get too hot. <laughs> so usually what I will do is I will wear any of my hand knit sweaters. Um, some go-tos are my Zoptus Pullover by Jeanette Knits. Um, my, I'm actually looking at them in my closet right now, so that'll help me. <laughs> um, my throw over by, uh, Andrea Mowry. Those are probably two of the ones that I pull to lift in the most. Um, what else is in there? Uh, my... I don't know if I've lifted in my wool and honey yet. My everyday sweater by Andrea, Ma <clears throat> excuse me, by Andrea Mowry. Um, my happier than ever sweater by Brienne Moody. Um, really, any hand knit sweater I, I think you can wear to go hike in or to to lift in or work out in. Um, it's really I think dependent upon your own personal tolerance of overheating. I tend to really like to layer up and stay super warm. I would rather break a sweat outside working out than 
just barely wear enough layers to where I don't break a sweat. And I, I do think that most people tend to be on that side, the, the latter side, where they would prefer to wear clothing to where they're just warm enough, but they don't overheat. I am opposite of that. I would like to wear all the things and be super warm and I'd rather be really hot. <laughs> so um, that's kind of my, you know, go-tos with um, hand knit sweaters. But a lot of times um, I will wear a sweatshirt, like a cropped sweatshirt um, or a sweatshirt that I have cropped uh, or a fleece. So for just some for extra warmth and everything and um, I also with barbell cycling or in a Metcon I don't necessarily with with like this sweatshirt from Black Mountain it's cropped and it's a great fit and um, like I did barbell cycling in this this morning and I don't necessarily worry about pilling or anything like that obviously because it's out of a uh, sweatshirt fleece um, but I think a game changer for my winter layering game uh, working out outside because I do CrossFit and lifting uh, in my backyard I don't have a garage so all of my lifting year-round is outside so if it's 30 degrees and I want to do an Olympic lift or a heavy back squat a heavy deadlift, heavy jerks, whatever it is, uh, I'm doing it outside. And, you know, in those temps, the barbell's cold um, and my body is cold. <laughs> so a game changer for me layering this winter was when I went to Black Mountain and spent time with my family this past January, my dad turned me on to some smart long sleeve smart wool base layers and I actually have that on <laughs> underneath this. I mean, this is literally what I wore to work out today. Um, oh, I kind of was thinking that might happen. My earbud came out. But yeah, this is what I wore to work out today was this sweatshirt over top of this is a smart wool long sleeve base layer that I got from Mountain Running Company. My dad bought me two of them and I basically wear these two on repeat because it is wool, <laughs> even though it's machine, you know, it's machine made, it, it still has the same self-cleaning properties um, as regular wool, I have noticed. Um, and I wear, I have a gold one and this one and I wear them constantly. They are a great layer, nice and uh, thin uh, and lightweight, but very warm, like trapping my body heat and stuff whenever I need it. So I really like a smart wool base layer with either a hand knit sweater or a sweatshirt. That's gonna be my go-to first to put on. Now, depending on how Let's see, I would say the next thing, I'm going to link patterns um, or to designers uh, because really I don't think that there's any one pattern that's like this is the pattern for active wear because um, I think any glove pattern, any fingerless glove pattern that you like or any hat pattern that you like or leg warmer pattern that you like. <laughs> I think any of those would be well suited to wear. Um, same as sweater patterns. You know, um, I you know I think any sweaters or any knitter crochet pattern that you prefer can work to work out in or to hike in. I think it's a matter of you just enjoying the pattern and also choosing the right yarn for the function of what you're wanting. So let's do gloves um, first. So um, fingerless gloves. I really love Mama Chi crochet patterns. They're uh, fast and they're functional and they're cute designs. So these are three Mama Chi patterns. Um, I do not remember the names, but I'm gonna link to Mama Chi crochet patterns in the description box and you can check her out. 
look through all her patterns. She's got great um, glove patterns, hat patterns, leg warmer, boot, oh, what a, like boot cuff things, um, slippers, cro all these really cool crochet designs. So definitely check her out. Um, and they tend to be super quick patterns. So this is a pair of fingerless uh, crochet mitts. I used Lion Brand, uh, like the cashmere blend Lion Brand yarn for these. And I barbell cycle with these. You can see the wear on them uh, here. But I, yeah, I mean, I do barbell cycle with these gloves. And I mean, I think they've worn pretty good. Um, so yeah, I would recommend if you're going to make these to barbell cycle, uh, or, you know, having gripping the bar for pull-ups, things like that, you basically just want to make sure that you pick a, a, a wool that has a high twist, um, that's going to be, you know, maybe with a little bit of nylon or something in it that's going to be longer lasting, but primarily looking at a, probably a worsted spun versus, you know, versus a woolen spun for sure and something with a higher twist but these are great this is also a mama chi fingerless mitt pattern and i use these most of the time to run in um, i really like them because they cover most of my hands but my fingers do peek out and a lot of times i will wear these um, and they're like a little cable pattern but um super cute and I don't remember the yarn that I used for these. It was like an alpaca wool blend. Alpaca wool blend. And they are very warm. Um, but the this is often what I do with fingerless gloves. Is, and these are my husband's. These are also a Mama Chi crochet pattern. What he does is he will wear, and I will do this too, depending on how cold my hands are, uh, wear a glove or actual gloves underneath the fingerless mitt pat, um, mittens and you get extra warmth that way. And he actually wore these this morning on his run. So there you go. Um, I will say, I know that this was about kind of like patterns and hand knit things, <laughs> but um, Again, kind of like the nod to the smart wool base layer and this being really nice and warm. Um, Defeat gloves. These are cycling gloves. But they have rubber uh, grips all along the fingers for uh, cycling. But these are actually great for CrossFit. I can do pull-ups in these and I can do lifts in these. Um, now, I typically will not do very heavy lifts with these on. I mean, if I'm going for a heavy lift, then I need to be uh, in contact with the bar to maintain safety. But lightweight things that I can throw around and bustle pretty easy. Yeah, I mean, I can wear these. Um, for instance, I can wear these for like Nancy uh, lightweight snatches in a 400 meter run and be very safe. So these are great. I will put a link to Defeat Gloves and Defeat also makes socks and they wear very nicely. Um, these are like made out of recycled plastic bottles actually. So they have a line that are like this, but they also have a merino wool uh, line as well. So you can look at either one of those if you are interested and they're very reasonably priced. Um, and the owners are very good people and friends of mine from back when I lived in North Carolina. And they used to uh, work with me whenever I was a professional athlete. So that is a disclaimer. But, <laughs> you know, I, I may be a little biased here, but like these gloves just work so well. I have multiple pairs. I have a blue pair, a black pair, a wool pair, and they're just on repeat and rotation. And I wore these today whenever I was working out also. So next, I would say after I take care of my core temp and my hands, 
Um, I'm looking for my head or my ears to stay warm. And most of the time, honestly, a headband does the trick over a hat for me because I really like to wear my hair in a ponytail or a messy bun. And a hat can kind of like, I don't know, like sometimes just mess with that. And it just doesn't work well. If I wear a hat, then I wear my hair down. But sometimes, like, it has to be pretty cold for me to want to do that. I think, like, for temperature regulation, um, pretty much a headband works well for, just works well for me because my ears and my head stay warm, but I still can, you know, have that heat release <clears throat> from not having my head fully covered. So, I'm going to encourage you to be creative here. These are all headbands that have no pattern whatsoever, <laughs> but they are worn a lot. Um, so I'm going to start with these two. Uh, these are both Tunisian crochet. And I just cast it on. I, I encourage you to find uh, just a, a number you know, just depending on the weight of yarn that you're using, just find a number that works well for your head circumference. Maybe you use a go-to hat pattern that you've made to know like, oh yeah, I need to do 80 stitches for this weight yarn or 60 stitches for this weight yarn. And then just make your own headband. That's exactly what I did here. Um, I did Tunisian crochet in the round. This is Sioux Copy yarn, actually, from the Farmer's Daughter Fibers, and I'm going to give a major, major nod to using Sioux Copy for active wear because this yarn does not pill. I want you to look at this. I made these whenever I was pregnant with my son, and my son is turning three next week, March 8th, uh, and we between me and my husband, we have worn the absolute hell out of these things. And they have not pilled at all. I've washed them, no pilling. So, and I actually wore this one today working out. So this one is uh, Porch Pumpin, Pumpkin, <laughs> Porch Pumpkin and Nappy. I made this one for my husband, but we kind of interchange wearing them. And then this is horse belly and uh, I don't know, maybe North Winds. I've got dream. I don't think it's I've got dreams to remember. Um, I don't know. A very pretty blue, but it and here's my join for in the round for the Tunisian crochet. But yeah. I haven't done very many Tunisian crochet projects, but I do really enjoy Tunisian crochet. And these headbands have gotten so much wear. So um, some of the, <laughs> no pattern, I just put them on and made them. So same thing with it. This is also, uh, this is also Sioux Copy yarn. It's the same color as this. And, um, this was a birthday present for my husband one year, at, and it's just knit. I did knit to purl to for a couple of rounds, uh, you know, at the start, then did, uh, you know, stockinette till it was as long, you know, as wide as I wanted it for his head, and then knit to purl to to finish it off. So again, like this is just a really like a Sioux Copy, great way to have a nice layer on your head. And here, I'll give you the, my gauge <laughs> checker or my <clears throat> length checker here. Um, this is five and a half inches in length, uh, about yeah, so five and a half inches is about what you need to be able to make a little quick headband. Um, so yeah, any of your scrap yarn fingering weight that you have, you could hold it double, um, that would work well. Uh, and then this is a little crochet through the back loop. Um, again, with 
some scrappy yarn, like just from yarn scraps that I made. And it's a nice layer. So um, again, like this one's crocheted, so it's a little thicker than a knit fabric. Um, so if I do um, wear a hat with my hair down, I will wear any hat, <laughs> but these are ones in particular that I really like. Um, this is the sea glass hat by Wool and Pine Designs. Um, these are my kids, uh, but they love these. Um, and I haven't made one for myself yet. So if I made one for myself, I would not put a pom-pom on it so I could work out in it um, because the pom-pom would flop around and like drive me crazy. But this is a great way to use up scraps. Uh, one of my absolute favorite patterns of all time. And then this is just a stockinette um, slouchy beanie, but the brim is double lined. <clears throat> and I don't remember the name of this pattern, so I'm sorry, but I do really like this one because I can wear a ponytail up in this one if I really, really want to. And then the other two are um, by Andrea Mowry. This is the Ghost Ranch hat and the Harlow Worsted hat. Um, these are great to throw on even like when I'm warming up and then I can take them off if I want. So, uh, but for the most part, I do, I mean, 90% of the time I'm wearing headbands unless it's really, really cold. Um, next would be the neck. And again, I would say any cowl, any Mobius cowl pattern that you like or enjoy or you have already made would be great to just go ahead and wear. Um, you can wash them if the wool is not cleaning well enough, um, you know, after wear and use. Um, and I do that. I definitely do wash them at least once a season if I've worn them to work out in a lot. Otherwise, if I just wear them from day to day, like for daily use, I don't, you know, if they're not smelling, then I don't, you know, wash them. And I do wear these year round. So this is the, these are by True Grit Knits. This is the Volant, Volant Cowl, Mobius Cowl, and this was the first Volant Cowl that she came out with. And I will say, I will wear this one warming up, and then I'll take it off uh, because it's got mohair and it's really nice and warm and snuggly. Um, this one I will work out in, like I've done Metcons in, um, I like it, it just fits nice and hugs my neck nice uh, without flopping around. And I really like that. Um, and this is out of Pishkin and Spin Cycle. And my Mobius cowl is out of Magpie Nest Sport and Magpie Mohair with Spin Cycle. Um, and then this is probably, um, this is the Pine Tree State of Mind cowl by uh, Elizabeth. Hall Designs, Ghost Story Writer on Instagram. This is with Spin Cycle and some special uh, millspun merino wool um, that's from a small Colorado farm, 2BU. And I recently made this one this past fall, but I will also wear this one to warm up in. And I have done some power lifting in this because it does the way that I made it, I made sure that it would fit really nice around my neck so I could wear it to work out in. And then this one, <laughs> it's like the Mobius cowl parade. Um, this is the Kill em cowl by Knitting Ruined My Life. Her name's Meryl on Instagram. And, um, and I love this. This is with Sue Coffee Evergreen and Verba Volant spin cycle. And I have done a few runs in this one, actually. Um, and this one is a, a little bit, I think when I blocked it, I, um, I kind of zhuzhed it out a little bit. So, um, so this one doesn't fit my neck quite as snug, but it still works fine for runs. So, um, and I love it for that. So, and then this is my advent 
Farmer's Daughter Fibers Cowl. I love this one. It's out of um, Merino DK that was in the Farmer's Daughter Fibers Celestial Countdown. Sorry, it wasn't an advent. It was a Celestial Countdown box. And I really do love the, um, the notion of the Celestial Countdown. So I thoroughly enjoyed making this cowl. And this is one that me and my daughter will wear whenever we're outside. I love how long it is because it stacks really nicely. And like, you just feel like you have this nice warm hug around your... <laughs> around your neck. So this is also, um, this was also a really good one, um, for working out. Okay. Um, I do sometimes if it's windy, um, well, depend if it's really windy, then I don't wear a hat, but if it is like just breezy and stuff, um, I will wear a trucker hat with one of my knit headbands. So I did want to share that um, this was from when I was on the Hoka One One Elite team. So, and I still wear this. I have a few hats and visors from team issued gear and I still wear them a ton. So then lastly, whenever it is really, really cold outside and I still want to work out, <laughs> um, I, I wear crocheted leg warmers. And you would be surprised, but wearing something on the lower part of your legs, it's totally 80s, but it totally keeps you warm. So again, these are both, um, no, this is a Mama Chi leg warmer pattern, and this was a free crocheted leg warmer pattern. Um, and I think they're both with like acrylic yarn. I didn't do anything fancy. Um, these have been washed multiple times, um, but I, you know, I, they get a lot of wear in the deep winter up here if I want to work out outside. And they do really help. So um, any of so any of those patterns I think would be great. I did also want to give a nod to Tori Knits NYC. Um, her Manhattan hat, any of her Manhattan series are great for wearing outside. I recently, um, and she has Manhattan uh, knit fingerless gloves, at, or you can make them mittens too. Those would also be fantastic to work out in. I have not finished the ones that I have started, but I'm making some out of Recollect Worsted by the Farmer's Daughter Fibers, and I love them so much. Um, I need to get them finished, <laughs> but I've been, uh, I've been really enjoying my test knits and some socks, so I just haven't gotten to them yet. But I did want to share, um, this is my brother. I'm going to try to not have the, there you go. This is my brother. Um, I made him a Manhattan hat um, bulky with Brooklyn Tweed. Ooh. It's not shelter. Quarry, Brooklyn Tweed Quarry. Yay, I remembered. Um, so this was Brooklyn Tweed Quarry from Black Mountain Yarn Shop. And I made that on the plane uh, on the way to Black Mountain this January. And he loves it. He wears it on uh, all of his runs. Um, I love that he, I mean, and I, I he's, very, he's a very knit worthy person um, because he, he wears the things that I make him and that just makes my heart so happy um i i don't gift knit very much anymore but i absolutely will gift knit for him and for his wife because they use and wear the things that i make them and as a maker that just makes my heart sing so much uh that the items that i made were uh they're loved and they're used frequently you know they're not just sitting around collecting dust um or they're sitting around waiting to be worn but they are thought of as too precious to wear um i really like that uh him and his wife wear my the things that i make them out in the mountains and running and doing the things that they love so yeah let's see that is all of the show and tell 
that I have for <laughs> recommendations for active knitwear. I mean, like I said, like it really is, I, I don't think that there's really a distinction for what can be a good pattern to wear whenever you are out working out or not. Um, I, it can be anything that you've made handmade. Um, I just think that you've got to just go for it. I mean, I'm totally into wearing the things that you make um, and using them. So instead of just letting them, just looking at them and the, waiting for special occasions, um, every day is a special day. And whenever you're doing the things you love, you might as well have the beautiful things that you make with you. Um, one last thing I will say as far as things that I use whenever I'm out running is a, uh, like handkerchief bandana. Um, this is one that I won from a, from the Sierra Vista trail race or yeah. Um, so it was a few years ago whenever I ran it, uh, now. So yeah, maybe a couple years now. So, but anyway, this is something that I will kind of fold up. And sometimes, I mean, I, you know, you can wear them around your neck like this, and that's like a nice warm, warm layer there. But I tend to really like to wrap them around my wrist and tie them on my wrist. And I use them as a snot rag. There you go. Full disclosure. Very handy piece of equipment. But you know what? If you are a sewist, you could use a uh, scrap cotton fabric that you have laying around and turn it into a bandana and use it working out. There you go. One way to use your fabric scraps. <laughs> so, okay. Um, looking at the time, I think I'll go ahead and show you a few things that I've been up to and then I'm going to save some stuff for, uh, my next episode. So I did want to share, I have one FO and it is the Starflight socks. <laughs> I really love the way that these turned out. This is with, um, these are a pattern from the Pom Pom magazine that Candace edited from the Farmer's Daughter Fibers. And she did just such a beautiful job curating that collection. Um, it is my absolute favorite pom-pom issue of all time. And I want to make more of the patterns in it, honestly. So, uh, but I finished these. I've made the saw socks and, and I hope that's how you pronounce it, but I wear my saw socks all the time. And um, I just finished these. And these are made out of bear paw sock. Everything's copacetic. And then the burnt orange is some sock squad uh, farmer's daughter yarn that I had in stash. Um, so yeah, I love everything about these socks. The color work is so, I, I love the star quilt kind of design like that barn quilt that just makes me think of in North Carolina riding my bikes around the countryside and seeing barn quilts on all the barns in the Blue Ridge Mountains and um, even in eastern uh, North Carolina in Wake County whenever I rode a lot there. Um, I just it's so nice nostalgia whenever I see the the quilt square motif. <laughs> That's what I think of is all the hours I spent biking around and seeing quilts on barns. <laughs> but um, anyway, I love that these socks have this like little quilted stitch pattern across the top of the foot. It's just a nice little detail. The bottom is plain stockinette um, and the heel is, I don't know, just nice and beautiful. It's a very polished sock. I have not woven in the ends yet on these, but I've worn them a couple times. And I told my husband, I'm like, that's a dangerous game I'm playing. I really need to weave in the ends because I have a bad habit of not doing that if I don't do it immediately. So anyway, okay. The next thing that I will show you, and I think this will be the last thing we'll just stop with today, is a test knit. This is a test knit for 
Caitlin Hunter. I'm gonna make sure that I've got, and I just split for the sleeves this morning. Uh, this is, it doesn't have a name yet. This is coming out in April, um, in mid-April. And I don't have a specific release date yet, but when I do, I will let you know. And this is out of a new base coming from Ritual Dyes. It is a floofy, that's the technical term, a floofy DK weight base. Um, but in all seriousness, the real... <laughs> The real yarn content is, um, this is a Surrey alpaca, brushed Surrey alpaca with a merino core to it. And I was so excited to be able to have the opportunity to test this beautiful pattern. It's an Alaskan inspired pullover um, that Caitlin has designed, but I was I was so excited to have the opportunity to test knit this. I am obsessed with floofy yarn like anything floofy like let's let's go um I, I mean that's part of the reason why I love the tessellated series by Andrea so much because it uses a floofy <laughs> yarn but um I saw this color work pattern and it is classic Caitlin Hunter meditative no major long floats like the last few rows here in the in the yoke i did catch uh my floats but with this yarn you really don't have to because it's so toothy with all the fluff um but yeah i chose to go now caitlin used four colors in her design i'm only going to use three and the body is going to be knit in a brioche tuck stitch so it's not going to just be plain stockinette from here down so I'm really excited to get into that um, and get some more going and to be able to show you my progress um, and where I'm at on it maybe you know next episode or the episode after that just depending on I'm going to get to a good place on this and then I have some um another test net for Andrea that I've been kind of, I've been working on both of these at the same time. So I need to be mindful of my deadlines for both of them. But anyway, um, what can I say about the yarn? So I, I love the yarn. These are the three colors that I'm using. Uh, I forget the names. So I'm just going to call them dark gray, white, and this is bone, um, I'm pretty sure, but it, this is light gray. These are the three that I'm using. And I think for the body, I'm going to use the white and the light gray in my brioche. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, so I'm really excited to share more with you guys as I get, you know, further further progress <laughs> on that test knit. But yeah, no, I mean, it's it's been a joy to knit. I started that sweater Sunday. Um, it is knit on US 9s, um, but you totally could do yarn substitutions. And the thing that I really love about testing for Caitlin is she encourages people to use what yarn they have or what they, you know, what they love. What are you gonna wear, you know, what are you going to love and wear whenever you're done with the sweater? And so I think there's a decent amount of, there's a few testers that are using Lopi um, and just, and different yarns and stash. As long as you get gauge, um, Caitlin is like, yeah, whatever you, you do you, man. And I think that's great. Um, so I just, I love that she encourages that creativity uh, in makers. So, um, and I mean, and I will say, that pretty much that most of the designers that I've tested for really encourage that as well. So, um, but yeah. Um, so you could do some yarn substitutions if you didn't, this is what the yarn looks like. Um, so this is a new base coming from ritual dyes. I don't know that they have a name for it yet. Um, so, 
so but it's it's coming i'm assuming it'll be coming out in april with the release of this beautiful sweater that caitlin has designed so i will um you know as it gets closer i i mean the names are on the tags <laughs> of the colorways i mean i'll have all those specifics as it gets closer to the deadline but um yeah for now dark gray white light gray so i'm going with a neutral palette and i'm really excited with how it's turning out. I think I'll get a lot of wear. So, and I'm actually sewing another pair of chanterelle pants that is in a gray gingham. So I'm sensing a theme here. <laughs> I'm all about gray lately. I don't know. Um, so anyway, that is all I have got for you today. Um, and I think that that's enough. This has been long enough, yeah? Um, I do have some socks that I'm knitting and some socks that I'm going to cast on sometime this week. <laughs> I just can't help myself. Um, I'm really enjoying sock knitting. So, and I do imagine since this, this, the main event of this episode was about workout gear, I do believe I will be working out in hand knit socks um, in the future as, you know, as I accrue more pairs to be able to wear, like right now I just have like three pair that are, well, four. Yeah. I have like four pair that are finished. So, so as I get more hand knit socks made, I, you know, I'll start working out in them. Um, so, and when I do, I'll share feedback about which ones, uh, I really like. So that is it for now. I, I really do and hope that um, you have a wonderful rest of your week and that you have some time to do the things you enjoy with the people that you love. And if you watched this whole video and you made it this far, I really appreciate you spending some time with me. And if you would take a minute to comment and share what you're working on um, and what you've been knitting on lately and what's been sparking joy. I would love to hear. I love to hear from you guys and I will get back to you. Um, and let's see, anything else that I can think of? I don't think so. Um, my contact information is, um, as always, in the description box. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any future content if you enjoyed today's video. And check me out on Instagram, too. I'm Edmiston Creations on Instagram. So that's it. I hope you have a lovely rest of your week and happy mindful making.